overcame a second half deficit to take the sting out of the Yellow Jackets. But all the advice in the world couldn't overcome the North Carolina Tar Heels as the Blue Devils were soundly beaten Wednesday night. Today, it's a regrouping session for Mike Krzyzewski, and Dave Odom continues his search for his first ACC win. From Winston-Salem, the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest host the eighth-ranked Blue Devils of Duke. Raycom Sports and Entertainment and J.P. Sports present the best in college basketball, the Atlantic Coast Conference. Today's game is brought to you by Pepsi. Week, and they were blown out by North Carolina. And then on Thursday night, Wake Forest had a close one with North Carolina State. So both these clubs looking to rebound from weeknight losses. If you're the Duke Blue Devils with a young team, you certainly don't want losing to become a habit. And playing on the road's always tough. And Wake Forest, they're looking for their first league win, and they're confident they're going to get it soon. Duke just hopes not too soon. Well, let's see how they might get it with our Mazda game plan. As we take a look at the Mazda game plan, brought to you by Mazda Cars and Trucks, Mazda just feels right. If you're the Duke Blue Devils coming off that loss the other night, you really have to wonder about Duke's intensity. If they play with intensity and get some perimeter play that they didn't get the other night, then they're always pretty tough to handle. For Wake Forest, they have not shot the ball very well from the perimeter, and that goes along with not getting anything inside. So they're going to have to get a perimeter game to go along with their post game to play basketball in this day and age. You really do need inside, outside, and Wake just hasn't had that. Outside for Duke, they didn't get it the other night because Phil Henderson got in some early foul trouble, and that certainly didn't help their cause. Well, one of the things that my playing career demonstrated is it's hard to score from the bench and that's where <laughs> Phil Henderson was most of the night averaging 17 points a game better than 30 minutes a game he really needs to be in the ball game to give Duke that inside outside threat David Carlisle for Wake Forest he started his first game of the season on Thursday night he's a 44 percent shooter from three-point range if he can get hot then that might open up the inside for Sam Ivey so that's the uh, Wake Forest is looking for a big game from him as well Wake Forest started strong but they've really struggled as of late and the Duke Blue Devils now try to put it back together after what happened on Wednesday night. We'll talk more about it when we return after this from our good friends at Natural Life. Brad Nessler and Dan Bonner with you at Lawrence Joel Memorial Coliseum here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. The Wake Forest Demon Deacons on their home floor as they mate the number eight Duke Blue Devils. And Duke trying to rebound from a loss on Wednesday night. Wake Forest had a matchup with North Carolina State Thursday night and they came up short. Well, the Duke Let's meet our starting lineups. And we go to our PA announcer, Quinn Taylor. From Angola, New York, number 32, Christian Leitner. At the other forward, a six foot six junior from Clifton Park, New York, number 22, Greg Kubek. Starting at center, a six foot ten senior from Bloomfield, New Jersey, number 30, Ala Abdul Nabi. At the guard position, a six-foot freshman from Jersey City, New Jersey, number 11, Bobby Hurley. And at guard, a six-foot-four senior from University Park, Illinois, number three, Phil Henderson. Head coach of the Blue Devils is Mike Krzyzewski. And now, Deacon fans, stand up, and let's introduce our Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Starting at forward, a six foot eight sophomore from Newton Grove, number 44, Chris King. And the other forward, a six foot eight sophomore from Washington, D.C., number 31, Anthony Tucker. Starting at center, a six foot seven senior from St. Louis, number 40, Sam Ivey. A six foot eight senior from Winston Salem, number 25, David Carlisle. And at the other guard, a five foot 11 sophomore from Darlington, South Carolina, number four, Derek McQueen. The head coach of the Wake Forest Diva Deacons is David Odom. looking for his first ACC win. Wake Forest and Duke coming up from Winston-Salem. Devils <laughs> three and one in the ACC. The Demon Deacons 0 oh and four. And we're just about set to tip it off as we take a look at our starting lineups. 
Greg Kubek, you know, for Duke there, number 22. He had had two real good games going into the North Carolina game, and he didn't score. He's another person who Duke really needs to play well if they're going to be competitive. First game in 1906, it was 15 to 5 was the final. I have a feeling we'll have a different outcome today. The 191st meeting in a brand new Coliseum here in Winston-Salem. Wake Forest looking for an upset. They pulled one a year ago tomorrow against the number one team in the land, the Duke Blue Devils. Can they do it against number eight Duke? One of, the things, to find out. one of the things to look for early is to see if Duke really tries to pound the ball inside. Sam Ivey's a little small in there for plain center. And Duke will control, and freshman Bobby Hurley will bring it to the front court. Kubek's going to take it and got it. Well, there's no better way to come back from a game where you don't score any points than to drill one of those babies to start right off the opening tip. Defensively, Duke in that close man-to-man. -man. Here's Sam Ivey, the senior. He got it. They're dead even. Now that's one thing where Sam Ivey offensively playing that center slot. It's going to be difficult for Abdel Nabi to get out on the perimeter and guard him. And Ivey can definitely play out there 18 feet away. Ball knocked away. Anthony Tucker got a piece of that one. Obviously, Duke is going to try to go inside against Ivey, but they've got to get some movement in there. Ivey can guard Abdel Nabi if he's just going to stand. Christian Leitner. to her there's a double team down low on Leitner. You see McQueen just leaving Hurley. That's what you give up. Hurley faked the shot, tried to feed it inside. Nobody read his mind. And here comes Wake on the other end. Sam Ivey with the first four points of the game. Ivey struggled a little this year. The last thing Duke wants to see is Ivey get off to a great start. Well, Ivey's almost got as many points in the first minute or so as he had all of Thursday night against NC State. Anderson got a little bit low on the baseline, missed the shot. Leitner will follow it. He can't get it to drop. Tucker clears it off, and here comes Wake trying to go up 6 0. Carlisle misfires, and Abdelnabi will clear it off. Bill Henderson, air ball. He just got out of practice on Wednesday, didn't get to play. That's right. Leitner gets it in, Abdelnabi. Reverse layup won't go. Abdul Nabi didn't, doesn't really need to take it under the basket and make it a reverse layup, Brad. He's got such a size advantage, he just needs to power up inside. Here's Tucker outside. Now McQueen will reset it. Eric McQueen, one of the five freshmen in the ACC and the country a year ago. And here's another one, Chris King. Leighton really moving his feet well. That's a great pass. Beautiful pass. King to Tucker. Nice cut by Tucker, but boy, you just can't throw the ball from outside directly into the post any better than that. 6-2, Wake Forest on top. And get a foul on Leitner. Leitner with an elbow, says Dick Pavaro, so that'll be Leitner's first person. One of the points of emphasis in officiating this year, and everybody's heard this, but it's, it's something that you'll see called at least once or twice in every game, and that's an illegal screen. Leitner moving when he set that screen. The officials are looking for that, particularly early in ball games, is when you're going to see those points of emphasis emphasized. 6-2, Wake Forest on top. second violation. McQueen just cannot dribble the ball out there. Hurley does a nice job keeping pressure on the basketball. McQueen's teammates have to get themselves open so Derek can give it up. Dave Odom you saw there on the Wake Forest bench, their first year head coach. I think his count to five when his team has the ball is a little slower than the officials and it's a little faster when Duke has the ball. Abdelnabi. So it all averages out to five. <laughs> Leitner outside. Got it. Christian Leitner with a jumper outside. It's 6-4. Tucker on the other end in a hurry off the front of the iron. Battle for the rebound jump ball. Possession will go to Wake Forest. It's one of those balls for Christian Leitner, and he's in a good position to rebound, but it comes off the bottom of the rim, and it's always hard to rebound with your chin. <laughs> you tried that a little bit in your playing game, didn't you? Well, that was one of the reasons I was such a great player. Carlisle. My best, my best rebounding move. Carlisle feeds it to King, but he walked with it first. So back-to-back -back turnovers for the Demon Deacons. And Wake, Duke will have a chance to Wake tie Wake really needs to take care of the ball. Duke is such a powerful team, and Wake needs to make sure when they come down, they get a good opportunity at the basket. Early, nice lead for Abdelnabi, and we're tied up. 
Queen can't let him get by like that. Ivy had to come to help. There's nobody to pick up Abdul Nabi. Three and a half minutes into the game, tied at six. Chris King trying to get it in low to Ivy on the foul. And that's a pretty good idea. Even though Abdul Nabi's got a big size advantage over Sam Ivy inside, Ivy's a very effective inside player getting the ball. And I think he's going to create some problems in there. No foul. It's going to be ball out. Wake Forest. We have our first substitution of the day. As Thomas Hill checks in. Hill had eight points, three rebounds, and his best performance of the year on Wednesday against North Carolina. So he's obviously earned himself some time. Hurley steals it. Leitner picks it up. And here's Hill on the other end. He's a freshman now. He's just come in the basketball game. So what's he going to do? He's going to take the ball right at Sam Ivy and shoot it. It's a good play. Ivy with the foul. It's a nice job to penetrate by Thomas Hill. Now, of course, if there wasn't a foul called, I think his coach would have been really happy. Thomas Hill, freshman guard. As Dan mentioned, eight points the other night. Good outing against North Carolina. There weren't a lot of good Blue Devils who had good outings. Hill misses the first. Midland's going to check in, and Ivy will get a breather. So Wake Forest with their first substitution. Something new in the ACC this year. The uh, whatever those are down under the basket. Everybody's done it. I got to figure out what it is one of these weeks. I keep telling you what it is. There's Abdenami in the shot blocked by King. It's a gold card with a black dot in the middle. Of it. <laughs> Other than that, we're not sure of the significance. Abdul Nabi, right place at the right time. That's a great job by Medlin and King both. Nobody fouled him, knocked the ball out of bounds. Lob underneath, Abdul Nabi can't handle it. And Duke turns it over. Wake Forest has turned it over three trips in a row down court. Let's see what they do this time. He was out of bounds. That's number four in a row. They started off on a nice run of six points and now four straight turnovers. Wake is in real good position right here. You can see right there as King catches the ball, his foot is out of bounds. Always have to know where you are on the court. Four minutes into the game, tied at six apiece. That's the kind of thing that has to drive a coach crazy. Henderson will take the jumper, can't get it to go. Hill, nice position on the rebound. And he's fouled from behind. Boy, Hill can really get up off the floor. You were right, Brad. He did have nice position, but the elevator went up to one floor higher than anybody else in there. Pretty good defense right there. That's a tough shot by Henderson. But look at Hill get up on the board, slaps the ball, keeps it alive. Then as he goes up, he's going to get fouled from behind by King. Kubek's going to check back in for Duke, and Leitner will get it. One thing that you can see here early in the game is Mike Krzyzewski starts his substitution pattern. If Thomas Hill, who you can see had eight points against North Carolina, can play that way every time, then Mike Krzyzewski's Duke Blue Devils are not going to miss Robert Bricky nearly so much. Hill hits that free throw as Mike Krzyzewski has some words for Christian Leitner on the Duke bench. So Duke's got their first lead at 7-6. Hill will try to put the Blue Devils up by two. And does. Hill hits both free throws, and with 15.48 to go first half, it's a two-point Duke lead. We'll be back after this from our friends at Natural Light. Gurley, who had a tough game the other night against North Carolina as a freshman, you got to wonder how he's going to react. No problem right there. Beats Derek McQueen down the court, finds Abdul Nabi. That's also why Abdul Nabi's leading the ACC in field goal shooting, but you can see Duke's not too hot in that capacity right now, and they're three for ten, while Wake Forest twice as good from the field with 60%, but they turned it over four straight trips down the court. Yeah, and that's the key there, Brad. They don't have as many possessions. Duke building the lead at the free throw line. Robert Seiler in for the first time for Wake. Gets it over McQueen's all by himself. Doesn't hit the jumper. That's been the story of the Wake Forest season. Loose ball is going to be Wake Forest on their own baseline. They just can't seem to hit the outside shot. You've got to be able to play in this league from the perimeter. McQueen does a nice job right there. Kubek never saw him. Good effort by everybody involved. Inbounds comes to Chris King. He is yet to score. Here's McQueen on the 
fly. That one won't go either. Abdel Nabi up high for Duke. Pretty good defense by Duke. They bothered that shot by McQueen, forced him to change it. Abdel Nabi with three rebounds already for the Blue Devils. Wake staying in the man to man. And we're going to have an offensive foul on Henderson. You get down there on that baseline where Phil Henderson was. Robert Siler just wasn't going to let him by. And watch his arm right there. Flicks it out. There it is again. That's an offensive foul. You can't ward off the defender with that arm. So Wake Forest can tie if they can score. They trail 8-6. Got a couple of real good shots at the basket last time, but here they turn it over again. That's five out of six possessions they've turned it over. Nice pass to Hill in close. Duke with their biggest lead of four. If you're going to let Duke's defense convert those turnovers into easy baskets like that, you're going to have a long night. And another steal. Hill by himself. Fouled from behind. As Tucker got him. And that foul is going to be called before the shot. So Duke will get the ball out of bounds. Is that seven or six turnovers in the last seven possessions? Thomas Hill does a great job knocking the ball away, walking the tightrope there down the sideline. King doing a nice job catching up. He's not able to get there in time. Duke's defense doing a great job anticipating those passes, but Wake Forest has been sloppy with their ball handling. Ivy checks back in. You know, on defense, Brad, when you're set up, you want to be looking at the front of the guy's numbers, not the back. If your defense is always looking at the back of their numbers, then you really have a problem. Siler sits back down and Carlisle's back in. Kubek feeds in low. Leitner kicks it back out and Hurley will take it from three-point land. Can't get it to drop. Sam Ivey the rebound. McQueen really playing off Hurley when the ball goes inside. It looks like they're going to give Hurley the shot. There's another turnover. Seven of eight. Can't score, you can't lead. It makes a coach scratch the back of his head, doesn't it? Seven turnovers. If you're never going to shoot the ball, you're not going to score. Duke's on an 8-0 run right now and leading 10-6. On that 8-0 run, Wake Forest has turned the ball over seven times without a shot and missed two shots. Early looks into Leitner. Leitner's double team. Ivy really playing off inside. They're going to make Hill shoot it from out there. Hill's going to hit a three-pointer. That throws a monkey wrench right into that strategy. Now Hill's got seven. And it's the biggest lead of the game. Nice job by McQueen come and get the ball. That's what the point guard has to do. Got to be wary of the five-second count, though. And he turned it over. Well, we could go all day like this. It's nine turnovers, or excuse me, eight turnovers in the last nine possessions. And we've got a timeout with 13.39 to go here in Winston-Salem. A seven-point lead for Duke. We'll have the Mazda game summary. A look at first half action. 13 to 6. Duke out in front with 13.39 to go, and it's been... Almost five minutes, Dan Bonner, since the Wake Forest team has been able to score a field goal. Brad, and in that period of time, as we've been talking about, Wake has only shot the ball twice. Early got it in low. Abdelnabi's hook doesn't go, and the rebound comes off to Medlin. Good block out inside by Ivy and Medlin. Steal. That was a bad pass. Ivy having a good steal there by Medlin. Tucker up in close, and he can't get it to go. Wake Forest can't buy a basket. But well, at least they got a shot that time. That's right. <laughs> Not the greatest of lobs by Hurley. Now, Bonavi can't handle it. A turnover for Duke. They're second in a row. And here comes Carlisle. Nice drive on the other end. Good defense inside by Leitner. Still Duke 13 to 6. Wake stays in that man to man. You can see Duke really looking for Abdul Nabi inside. And Sam Ivey's trying to stay in there with him and give it away about three or four inches in height. Got to get down in and help out, Ivy. Leitner on top. Pass in. Abdul Nabi, can he handle it? Finally does. Now the 12 on the shot clock. He'll take it from the baseline. Foul inside. I think it's going to be against Phil Medlin. 
Medlin in there trying to battle. Wake Forest is small inside. Duke's got those two big guys, 6'10 in there. Medlin's about 6 feet 8. Ivy's 6 feet 7. That may not sound like a lot, but it is when you're trying to battle against those big bodies in underneath. Bill McCaffrey, another freshman in there for Duke. Over to Bobby Hurley, the more celebrated freshman in the country. And he walked with it. Well, it's good interior defense by Wake Forest. It's just a shame that their offensive efficiency hasn't been what Dave Odom would like it to be because they're doing a very good job on the defensive end. They've held their own on the boards, but, of course, lots of teams have problems with offensive efficiency when they're playing the Duke Blue Devils. Abdelnabi goes out, Kubek in. Good thing for Wake Forest right now that Duke has mishandled the ball. Dan, about uh, three trips in a row down court, or the score could be more lopsided, 13 to 6. Well, of, course, is. of course, these teams just aren't coming down the court and throwing the ball out of bounds. They have some help, and we've seen pretty good defensive effort on both ends. Almost seven minutes for Wake Forest without a score. Let's see if they get one this trip down. Queen, nice pass in, low to Ivy. Shot selection isn't bad. They're getting it in low, but they can't buy it even from five feet in. Ivy was under heavy pressure from Kubek. He actually put his shoulder into Kubek to force Kubek away, and then he took the shot, so it was slightly off balance. Duke, good hustle, but they knocked the ball out of bounds. Seiler way up for his jumper, and he got it. Finally, the long scoreless string ends. Cuts it down to a five-point Duke lead. Boy, that was a good play. Tough catch, and then he had to take that ball up through the hand of Robert Siler, who was coming back to help. 15-8. Duke again by seven. Early all over McQueen. He'll take the 15-footer. Now, if McQueen can do that, and he's missed a couple of those already, but if he can do that, just beat Hurley and shoot the ball on the run off the jump shot, then that's going to be a very effective play for Wade. Later kicks it back out to Hurley. He penetrates and goes right back to Later on the baseline. Rebound, McQueen's going to fight for it. In close, and we'll have a whistle and a foul on Brian Davis, I believe. Problem for Brian Davis right there is he was trying to come over the back of Sam Ivey to get at Derek McQueen, who had the ball. Got to have some long arms to get away with that one. There's Thomas Hill coming back in the game. And Davis will sit. It's Anthony Tucker. Haven't heard anything from him offensively. He's a leading scorer for Wake Forest. He's one for three so far, but another turnover. Hill steals it in front of Siler, takes it down himself. What a game that he has had so far. Boy, what a smile on his face coming back up the court. Hill, the leading scorer in the ball game, and Duke by seven. McQueen just threw that one away, thinking Siler was going to cut to the baseline. He cut toward the hoop instead. Pretty good defense by Phil Henderson is what forces that. Siler's able to see that he can't catch the ball out on the wing, so he goes back door. So Wake's in double figures in the turnover column, and they trail 17 to 10. Henderson may have gotten away with a walk, and his jumper goes. You're in double figures in the turnover column, and you haven't played 10 minutes in the game, and you're really having a problem. McQueen, his jumper on the baseline, won't drop. Laker clears it off for Duke. Duke doing a real good job on the defensive board. Wake just not getting very many second opportunities. Hurley tried to get it in low, stolen away. Siler thought about it over Laker. Drives the paint, and he will put it up. That's not a very good shot. Laker's got five rebounds for Duke. Point Duke Lee. Laker trying to make it double figures. Nice move inside. He's fouled. Looks like they got Sam Ivey, and if so, that'll be number two. It is against Sam. Sam started strong in this game with four quick points, but he's only averaging seven per game on the season, and that's so far off what he did as a freshman, sophomore, and junior. That Playing out of position and he's been right. hurt too. You're, he's trying to play center and at six feet seven in this league, that's awfully difficult to do. And so what other teams do is go right at him. And generally in a basketball game, if somebody's going to attack you, particularly attacking you inside, there's a very distinct possibility that you're going to get some fouls. He's one of the best free throw shooters in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Duke's got a bunch of them in fact. Got the shooter's touch to roll back in for him. 
Leitner's got five. Played well against North Carolina, one of the few bright spots in a lopsided loss to the Tar Heels Wednesday night. And he gets both free throws. Six points for Leitner. And we are at the biggest lead of the ball game right now. As Leitner is going to get a little breather. An 11-point cushion for Duke. really needs to concentrate on running the offense. That's a break there. Henderson thought he forced another turnover. Tucker will trigger it from the baseline. Siler guarded by Hurley and the Duke man away. Our Wake's only baskets have really come in transition situations. Tucker. Got Hill up in the air, and Hill fouled it as Tucker was really trying to go up for it. Now, Mike Krzyzewski is going to call Tuck, uh, call Hill over. I think he's going to tell him, you just don't need to go for that fake out there in the free throw line area. Here, Tucker with a good crossover dribble. Now he's got Hill at a disadvantage. Hill goes for that fake, and as he's coming down, that's the kind of a play where, as a defensive player, you just have to keep your feet. If Tucker's going to shoot that one, then you belly up to him, get your hands up in the air, make it a tough shot. There's a good look at Anthony Tucker. Transferred from Georgetown, sat out last season. This is the free throw. Wake Forest has had their trouble from the line. Only a 64% team uh, shooting percentage from the stripe. And he got the second. Tucker with three points. But it's still Duke by ten. Wake Forest stays in the man-to-man. -man. Hill is going to draw another foul. It's going to be on Tucker, his second. That's a tough matchup for Tucker defensively to try to get out there and guard Hill on the perimeter. He's got the size, but he doesn't have the speed of Hill. Hill showing you a real nice move with the ball. Pretty good quickness with the ball on that left-handed dribble. Caffrey in there now for Hurley at the point. Hill again, a nice drive. Way up in the air, and he got it. And that's going to be a career high for Hill, and we still have a long way to go in the first half. And I'll tell you something. They got their doors blown off over at North Carolina, but Hill came in and played very well. Obviously a confidence booster for him. Nice pass to Medlin from Tucker. Medlin had it blocked by Abdelnabi. Got it back and scored. That's Medlin's first score in seven games. We talked about the problems Wake has in the post. He's one of their post guys. Anderson wheels and deals on Carlisle. Trying to kick it out to Kubek. McQueen got a piece of it. Scramble for the ball. Wake Forest will get it. That's really good effort. You just can't ask more from your kids and have everybody going on the floor. Henderson, he's not, he doesn't want to give the ball. <laughs> Eight minutes, 11 seconds to go first half. 23-13, Duke by 10. Antonio Johnson coming in the ball game for Wake Forest. He's a real fine three-point shooter. Tucker will sit down for Wake Forest. It's awfully difficult if you're Derek McQueen, the point guard, to handle the ball against this kind of pressure if your number two guard isn't going to be able to get open and fill it up from the outside for you. But this is what happens. You get in there and you draw a crowd. Sure did. Got double team. Got it to Medlin and back out to Johnson. Very nice defense by Duke. That's a good switch by Hill right there. Out of 15 on the shot clock. Plenty of time. His pass, King. Can't get it. Oh, nice tip by Medlin. Just didn't get out. McCaffrey. Uncle Bobby out high and now Hill. Henderson's going to take the three. Got it. He's shooting 52% for the year from three-point range. His 37th tray of the season, and it's a 13-point Duke lead. See how far Duke's defense is forcing Wake to run the offense. Wake still doesn't have the ball in any kind of scoring position. Took three passes to get it to the free throw line. And there's another turnover as King doesn't handle the pass from McQueen. When you have to work so hard on offense, that's the kind of thing that happens. Henderson on the other end, fouled as he went up. 12 Wake Forest turnovers have led to Duke bringing it down in a hurry. And... Uh, Henderson now will be at the free throw line. Teams like Duke, Dave Odom there is trying to figure out what to do against this particular Duke team. 
But a team like Duke that emphasizes defense so much, they really force the opponent into turnovers, force the opponent into tough shots, and what that does is it translates into easy opportunities for Duke. When Duke isn't getting that kind of defensive play, they don't get the easy opportunities, therefore they struggle offensively. But with all these Wake Forest turnovers, they've gotten some very easy opportunities, and they're tough to beat when they're running the court. Duke four out of six, make it five out of seven. Leitner comes in. Brian Davis also checked in for Duke. Henderson, second and two, got him. So Phil Henderson puts Duke up 27 to 13. It was 6.50 to go in the first half. The Blue Devils have their biggest lead of the ball game. Compensated by Raycom Sports and Entertainment and JP Sports. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of Raycom and JP Sports is prohibited. Brad Nessler and Dan Bonner with you at Winston-Salem, North Carolina, where Wake Forest has turned it over way too much, Dan. Well, that's what we were talking about, Brad. You turn it over, it converts into easy two points. When everybody says, okay, let's play some defense and practice, they're always practicing their set defense. Very little practicing you can do, chasing people down the court, and there's another turnover. There's number 13, didn't take long. It's the point we were making before. When you're playing against Duke, and you're trying to play defense, you want to see that number with the Duke on top of it. You don't want to be always looking at that number with the name on top of it. You're in big trouble if you are. McCaffrey just drills a three. And now it's an 18-point game. Antonio Johnson with trouble against Hurley in the backcourt. Wake really only has one legitimate point guard. And he's sitting on the bench taking rest. He can't play all the time. Duke's turning up the pressure because they know that. Antonio Johnson. Runs out of real estate. Wake works it around, but Duke's defense has been phenomenal so far. Carlisle's jumper won't go. Medlin got too far under to try to tip it in. Ball just rolled off his hands. That's really a tough break because he was actually in good position. Davis. Misses, and we're going to have a foul on Hill, I think, over the back, trying to stuff that thing home. Hill really showing you something here today, getting up and down the court. That time he climbed up over Medlin and tipped it. Freshman out of Lancaster, Texas. Tucker's going to check back in, so will McQueen, who Dan spoke of, the only two-point guard really on the Stephen Deacon club. And what a freshman season he had last year. It's really tough for McQueen. He was sitting down for less than a minute. And now he's got to come right back in, and Duke just keeps that pressure on. 18 point, Duke Lee. Tucker has it stripped away by Hill. We've got a full house here, Brad, but the crowd is very, very quiet. Their deacons aren't doing very much to cheer about. Well, unless you cheer turnovers, they haven't had a lot to talk about. Medlin fouls Leitner in the lane. Second on Phil Medlin. Christian Leitner, who, of course, last year, kind of playing in the shadow of Danny Ferry. It's not, not too hard for that to happen. No, that was a long year shadow. Ferry, it was, but now he's got one of his own. He's kind of casting in the ACC, averaging 17 points a game. Of course, Duke, one of the premier basketball programs in the country, was one of the best coaches, and you lose good guys. You have other good fellas coming in. It's a credit to Mike Krzyzewski that he blends them, keeps blending, blending them together so well. Later, three for three from the free throw line. There's Henderson, who didn't play much against North Carolina the other night because of foul trouble. Hasn't been the case today. Later, still perfect from the stripe, and he's got eight points. Now it's 33 to 13, a 20 point cushion, the biggest of the ballgame. Wake Forest just has not been able to get anything going offensively. That's, again, Duke defense takes the ball away. We're going to get it done. Henderson. And now Wake Forest has more turnovers than they have points. And that's not a good sign. And Dave Odom realizing that will call a timeout and try to slow things down a little bit. 5.02 to play in the half here in Winston Salem. And it's been all Duke. 
with a 22-point lead. And this is how Duke has done it. David Carlisle penetrating in there. Great defense by McCaffrey. Nobody cutting. Once Carlisle picks up the ball, Duke's able to pick it off inside. It's just a matter of getting it ahead to Henderson. Here you see the end of the play. Henderson on the dunk. And that's been the view Wake Forest has had the entire game, chasing Duke down the court. And how good has Duke's defense been? Chris King, the leading scorer, only has one field goal attempt today. Anthony Tucker, the second leading scorer, only has made one field goal. Here is King, one dribble and tried to cross court it to Tucker, and here's another turnover. Henderson, nice pass, Hurley. Doesn't get it, but he's fouled. And he's gonna get a technical foul on Al Abdelnabi for hanging on the rim. Leitner got banged around underneath. Well, the Duke players really going after the board. Another fast break opportunity. Medlin trying to get back on defense. Wake actually does have four guys back. You can see everybody going on. It's Abdul Nabi that just cleans Leitner's clock from behind. Christian will say, thanks, Al. I appreciate it. That's yeah, great you have teammates do that kind of thing for you. He's going to go to the free throw line. He's going to get two shots. Fouls on Ivy, by the way. That's his third. If indeed they called it on Ivy, I believe they did. Here's Hurley at the free throw line. Shooting 81% from the strike. Doesn't get that one. First point for Bobby Hurley. 6-13. They changed the foul. It's on Derek McQueen, not on Sam Ivey. Of course, Brad, they didn't change the foul. We did. We did. So did the PA announcer a moment ago. <laughs> <laughs> Referees, they always had the same one. I thought that was Abdelnabi that hung up there. Carlisle will shoot the technical free throws. I guess it was Henderson, though, because he's the one that uh, the tee was called on. Well, we've got everything straightened out now. And Carlisle with his first two points of the game. 36-15. Mike Krzyzewski's troops by 21. Under five minutes to play in the half. That's a half to wait for us to be very happy to see come to a close here. Queen almost traveled. That defense is right in your face all the time. Chris King drives, reverse layup, good move. Nice job by King. It's his first basket. Nice lob in, Leitner. An easy one for Leitner. Wake Forest really needs to get some help there. Green just laid on Layton. Nice pass by Tucker. King got in low, leaves it for Medlin. He's finally going up and another chance for a three-point play. Last couple of times down the court, Wake Forest has managed to get the ball inside, something that they hadn't been doing earlier in the ball game. In fact, that was one of Dave Odom's big concern is their post play. But here you can see King, the good fake, freezes Leitner to the floor. Medlin doing a nice job filling in that open space, forcing the ball up in there and drawing the foul. Abdul Nabi with a foul, so Phil Medlin, 6'9", sophomore. Chance for the three-point play. Misses the free throw. Tough Carlisle, I do believe. Oh, Wake gets a break there. They're going to say Duke last touched it. Carlisle Hill going after the ball. That free throw came out of there pretty hard. The hand here is for Ralph Kitley, number 33, senior center coming in the ball game. One of the crowd favorites. A hard, hard worker. 38-19, Duke. Wake Forest trying to come up with some offense. That's a tough pass right there. King was busy trying to get his position, wasn't ready to receive the ball. Wake Forest has to watch out, or they'll have 20 turnovers at halftime as Henderson hits the three on the other end, his second three of the day. You just cannot leave him open to shoot the basketball. He's having a great, great year. 12 points already for Henderson. Defensively by Henderson on the other end. Carlisle 
takes it off balance, almost an air ball. Bobby Hurley will come out of there with it. Nice thought, tried to get it ahead to Hill. That's just too tough a pass to throw from half court to get it. It's not, the ball's not going to kick up for you, and it did not come up far enough for Hill to get it. In fact, Hill sort of looked at her like he was surprised. Mike Krzyzewski, second, uh, second winning as coach in Duke basketball history. 214 wins at Duke. Carlisle goes out, and Antonio Johnson comes back in for Wake Forest. Nice pick. the jumper though. Boy, Hurley went down like he'd been hit on the head of the baseball bat. They wasted the screen of the year and Hurley tried to answer on the other end with his own layup. Doesn't get it. Henderson will bring it off. Boy, Kidley, he sort of crouched down and got his legs into that one. Get it. Crunched it. Hurley was only giving away 100 pounds. <laughs> Henderson starting to warm up. He's got 14. Henderson's made five straight. Slaytner has done. He appears to have taken a hit. He's taken a few shots in the last couple of minutes. Now this is one that he's going to have a hard time walking off. Slaytner is the one guy that really pushed it the other night in a 19-point loss to North Carolina. He ended up with 18 points in that one. The biggest lead of the ball game, 43 to 19, Duke. Leitner walking very gingerly off the court, battling for position inside. Look at the great position that he's got. Looking at his hip in there, like they have a hip pointer that was bothering before the game, and sometimes just a little contact that thing can really hurt. Now we got Kubek with a hold inside. To look at Leitner sitting there on the bench. Really a hard worker. That right hip is the area that seems to be the problem. Two minutes and 20 seconds to go in the half, and Chris King will go to the free throw line. Lock out, lock out, Phil. See his numbers on the year. Better field goal shooter than he is from the line. Showed why with that one, didn't he? Kittley tried to keep it alive. All he did is tip it to Hurley. And Hurley turns it over on the other end. Here comes McQueen. Up and in. Well, that's good speed by McQueen with the basketball. Thomas Hill just couldn't catch up. In and out with the three, and Tucker had the rebound. Fouled by Kubek, who's second in a row. Kubek, just as long as he was in the neighborhood, figured he may as well reach in. It's one of those reaction fouls. You don't really mean to do it. Kubek playing a lot because Robert Bricky is still out with a knee injury. This will be the fourth game that uh, Bricky's missed. Leitner comes back in, so he apparently he's all right. It's Thomas Hill. He's done quite a job so far today. Talk about Robert Ricky being out, and he'll be gone still for another couple of weeks. But Thomas Hill, who you get a look at sitting there on the bench in between Brian Davis and Tommy Amaker, the assistant coach, if Hill can continue that kind of play, then Ricky may have a hard time getting his job back. Kitley with a tip on oh, and this one. And we talked about Phil Nedlin, how he hadn't scored in six games coming in. Ralph Kitley hasn't scored in seven games coming in. It's not much from your big man, is it? It's not anything. <laughs> you want to get technical about it. <laughs> Leitner knocked down by Kitley. Boy, Kitley's making his presence felt in there, and we mean felt quite literally. That's right. Out of 125 to go in the half. Kubek had the ball tipped. Kitley comes up with a oh, loose ball. Pinball out there, bouncing off people's legs. Wake finally gets it. McQueen got it on the baseline, back out. Kitley leaves it for King. Wide open jumper. Just won't go. King's not an outside jump shooter. He's really got to be functioning close to the basket. Now it looked like Derek McQueen turned his ankle. 
So that's the last thing Wake Forest needs. No kidding. Dave Odom's next best move would be to go to one of his assistant coaches, Ricky Stokes over there, right behind Odom, you see in the background, former Virginia guard. Well, you don't want to go to Jerry Wainwright. Probably get a technical <laughs> foul for somebody coming in with that kind of a jacket on. That's right. <laughs> Carlisle's going to come in. McQueen will sit down. Might be all we'll see of McQueen this half with 101 to go. And Duke by 22. Nice spin move by Hurley. Leaves it for Abdullabi in the paint. Boy, that's a strong, strong move in there. Boy, what power. Ella Abdullabi. Great move to get the bucket for the 6'10 senior out of Bloomfield, New Jersey. Here's another look. See, Kidley has to come and help, and when he does, all Abdul Nabi steps in, but that great pivot and then just powers it up. Something, something that small, Abdul Nabi is pretty happy about, but something that's seemingly as insignificant is just a pivot. But that's a great, strong pivot. Used those long legs of his, got to where he needed to go. the chin from this ball game as he completes the three-point play. Those aren't nearly as impressive when you're wearing your away colors. It's always better if you have a wound like that and you're wearing your white uniform with leads on. <laughs> Antonio Johnson's jumper. No good. Carlisle tried to tip it. Tucker's got it, but he's in a lot of trouble. Boy, Wake Forest getting some chances. The fifth one goes. King finally got it to drop. Still, Duke's got Wake Forest doubled with 21 seconds remaining in the half. And Duke will play it for one shot. Johnson trying really hard to keep the ball away from Hurley, but Hurley doing a nice job going and getting it. Here comes Hurley's move with five seconds. Leitner, somebody better take one. Nice move by Leitner, and he scores at the buzzer. Well, that's the way you draw them up, and it certainly worked for the Duke Blue Devils. Here at halftime, it is Duke with a 25-point lead. 48-23, Duke out in front here in Winston-Salem. Brad, just a tough first half all the way around for the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. They started out very well. Duke scored the first two of the game. Wake came back and hit six, and it looked like we were really going to have a ball game, but then Wake ran into that stretch where they turned the ball over nine of ten possessions. They went seven minutes without scoring. They only took two shots during that seven-minute period. Missed them both. Duke ran out to the lead, and from then, Wake Forest has been trying to catch up without any success at all. Wake Forest is going to need a gigantic second half to get back in this, and they are 0-6 on the season when they trail at halftime. So a long way to come back for Dave, Ortem, uh, Dave Odom's Demon Deacons of Wake Forest. 48-23 at halftime here at Joel Memorial Coliseum. And we'll be back with our halftime activities coming up after these words. Today's ACC action is brought to you by Budweiser, True Value Hardware, Buick, Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company, and by U.S. Air. Holly Farms? Five at halftime here in Winston-Salem. As we take a look at our Mazda game summary. Brought to you by Mazda Cars and Trucks. Mazda, it just feels right. Brad Nessler and Dan Bonner back at Joel Memorial Coliseum and uh, Wake Forest, you said, coming in. Had to get some uh, perimeter play and a few other things. They haven't gotten anything but turnovers right now, Dan. It's been a very difficult ball game for Wake Forest. One of the things we talked about was Duke. And I think Duke coming off that big loss to North Carolina, what kind of intensity they would come out here with. And they have come out with great intensity. They've played great defense. For the Wake Forest Demon Deacons, we talked about how maybe somebody, they needed somebody to get some outside shooting going to make their post game go. And they haven't gotten that at all. As you say, the story's been the turnovers. Interestingly, Chris King, the leading scorer, has taken only 
four shots. Anthony Tucker, number two scorer, has taken only five shots. So here's two guys that's, that shoot the ball on your offense more than 40% of the time, and they've been limited to nine shots in the first half, and you just can't score very many points on nine attempts. You know guys for Duke like Henderson and Leighton are going to score points, but all of a sudden here comes Thomas Hill storming in for double figures in the first now, half. Hill has had a great first half. Uh, he has come off the bench, done a real good job for the Duke Blue Devils, and he's done a nice job with his penetration to the basket. Here you get an opportunity to see him beating Anthony Tucker to the basket. As you say, he came off the bench with 11 points. Phil Henderson, who had a very difficult game on Wednesday night, he's got 14 points in the first half pointing out to you just how important he is to that Duke game when he's scoring from the outside then they've got some opportunities inside Abdul Nabi and Leitner have played very well inside well Duke has had a few miscues of their own they've had some turnovers uh, in the first half of play some of those have turned into Wake Forest points just not enough of them for Wake Forest it's got to be very frustrating for Dave Odom because for about the first eight minutes of the game even though his ball club wasn't scoring they were staying in the game with their defense but against a team as talented as Duke you cannot continue to come down the court and give them the ball and give them the ball because your best defense is when you're set to play it and it's just hard to play defense in the transition and finally Wake Forest broke down Derek McQueen has had to play virtually the whole game because they just don't have another point guard and uh, he's gonna get a steal here well Duke has been playing in transition all game that's pretty good defense in the transition Hurley trying to make a tough pass you can see the kind of speed that Derek McQueen has he started with that ball at about half course pretty much even with Thomas Hill but by the time he got to the basket he was well out in front well the score certainly isn't even at halftime 48 23 right now the Duke Blue Devils the number eight team in the land are playing like it they didn't Wednesday night against North Carolina but they Farms player of the game award brought to you by Holly Farms America's number one brand of fresh chicken Holly Farms will contribute a thousand dollars to the Atlantic Coast Conference to be distributed among the member institutions under a conference-approved plan. That's the Holly Farms Players of the Game to be awarded near the conclusion of our broadcast. We take a look at our U.S. Air halftime statistics brought to you by U.S. Air. And Duke obviously shooting much better than Wake Forest, Dan Bonner. Duke's been getting many easier shots. Now, the interesting thing, we've been talking about the turnovers. Wake Forest's turnovers were, have not been the kind of aggressive turnovers that Duke has. Duke's turned the ball over 12 times, but lots of times when you're running up and down the court attacking, that'll happen. The turnovers haven't hurt Duke. It's really hurt Wake Forest. Duke with the advantage on the boards. Duke started out the game shooting three for ten. So they had 14 of their last 21, really turned it up. Remember, of those 16 Wake Forest turnovers, nine of them came in 10 trips down court, and they didn't even get shots off except a couple, and they missed those. So they went a long string of minutes without any kind of offensive production, and it certainly killed them in the first half. We talked about whether the turnovers hurt or not. For Wake Forest, they forced 12 Duke turnovers, but they converted them into only six points. On the other side of the ledger, Duke, with those 16 turnovers they forced against Wake, they converted those into 24 points. So you can see that big 18-point difference there is a whole lot what this game is. Well, let's see if Wake Forest can pull off a miraculous comeback in this ACC matchup. Not only with the 25-point lead, but the basketball to inbound to start the second half. Derek McQueen, who hurt his ankle late in the first half, back in the ball game. That's good news for Wake Forest. Anderson all the way to the hoop. Easy basket. That's not the way Wake Forest wanted to start this half. It's one of those things the coach goes in at halftime, and it's really sort of an easy job because what you have to say to your team if you're Dave Odom, okay, guys, we've got to do everything better in the second half. McQueen tried to feed it in low, and here comes turnover time again in the second half for Wake Forest. It's their 17th of the game. Abdel Nabi, everybody kind of clears out to the right side, but he'll bring it back out on top. Well, Al is not going to do much wheeling and dealing down the lane on the dribble. This guy might. Henderson with 16 points. Nice help. Good defense. Tucker forces the turnover. But throws it away on the other end. That's really a hard pass. There's no way he's going to get that through there. Hurley fouled on the way to the hoop. A couple of times now that Hurley sort of lulled McQueen to sleep with a very slowly paced dribble, then exploded past him. That time he draws the foul against Carlisle. They're going to call that foul on McQueen instead. Oh, Kubek starts the second half the way he started the first half. Duke stays in the man-to-man -man defense. The crowd, you know, they may as well not be here for all the noise they're making. Their team is down 30. Carlisle drives on 
Henderson put it up. Abdelnabi changed his shot a little. He somehow got his own rebound. Now a jump ball, Leitner and Ivy, and it'll be possession Wake Forest. Wake Forest paddling on the boards that time. If you Wake Forest, though, the effort is something that you need to have, of course, but you need to have some production along with that effort. 53-23, Duke. Tucker loses it. Hurley steals this one. Goes all the way against McQueen. And a big pileup under the hoop. Hurley has come out and really turned up the pressure in the second half. That time, he dropped off of McQueen as Tucker caught the basketball. Watch Hurley drop off here. Kubek knocks the ball away right to Hurley. I thought Tucker had dribbled the ball, but Kubek just knocked it out of his hand. There's the foul against McQueen. McQueen picks up two quick ones this half, three for the game. I tried to give that last one to Carlisle, but... You just wanted Wake Forest to have a point guard in there. <laughs> Bobby Hurley. And he hits a free throw. He's two out of three from the line today, shooting almost 81% coming into this. And one. Let him leave his he had 850 one. assists in his high school career. And he misses the second. Abdul Nabi, though, will try to follow it. He's fouled. I think Sam Ivey got him. Abdul Nabi just bigger in there, just turns. Sticks his elbow right in Ivy's face and drives up to the basket. Dave Odom. What's a coach to do, huh? Well, you hope the clock runs quickly. He knows he's got a great incoming class next year. It doesn't help him now. No, it doesn't. But he's the guy that's to rebuild the Wake Forest program, and they have a beautiful new arena here to do it. And uh, the incoming class, some people feel, is one of the top five in the country of the kids he signed for next year. But Dan said that doesn't do much when you're down 54, make it 55 to 23. Abdul Nabi, almost halfway to his average. Former Mr. Basketball in the state of New Jersey, born in Egypt. And he missed the second, but Henderson keeps it alive, and he drops it in. That's a shooter's kind of year right there. Turns around in the air with somebody right in his face and fills it up. And for Wake Forest, Carlisle charges, doesn't get the ball to go. Oh, nice drive, but you got to watch the body lean a little bit. Carlisle just mows over the Duke defender. Well, it's been so difficult for Wake Forest today. Carlisle's got to be thrilled that he's got the open lane to the basket, but of course it wasn't really open. Nice defensive effort. Anderson takes the charge, and Duke with the ball back, 57-23. Anderson, that's pretty impressive. You're up by 34 points, and you're in there taking the charge. That's a key stat on the Duke statistic sheet, too. They love that one. It means you've toughed it out for the team. Nice pass in ball to Leitner. Leitner with 14, and he's fine. It's like they got Abdul Nabi pushing against Sam Ivey inside. We talked early in the game about how Duke with the big advantage in terms of size is really able to punch the ball in against Wake Forest. And it was such a transition game in the first half, we didn't see a lot of it. But here in the second half, you can see the ball going into Abdul Nabi and Leitner, and they're converted. Ball was on Abdul Nabi. Wake Forest with Siler's jumper on the other end. Doesn't go, got his own rebound. Abdul Nabi blocks it from behind. Siler takes three chances and finally gets it. Now, if you have to work that hard to score, you're not going to score very very many points. Got two shots blocked on his way to the basket. Good effort by Robert Seidel. Leitner, nice in pass to Abdul Nabi, but he missed the reverse jam. Kubek in traffic is fouled, I think, by King. Could have been a number of players. Maybe it's Carlisle. Duke punching that ball inside. There was nobody back to help Ivy against Abdul Nabi. They are going to call it on Carlisle. That's his third. So now Ivy, Carlisle, and McQueen all have three fouls for Wake Forest. I can't help you after that. Ray Kubak with heard the voice of Dick Caparo telling Abdul Nabi he can't help him after that. After what, I don't know. Duke certainly doesn't need any more help today. Kubak gets a free throw. It's hard to miss Paparo's voice. Kind of booms out there. Andrew. That's why they call him Froggy. <laughs> Ray Kubek, Jr. out of Clifton Park, New York. Hits both free throws. Five this half, seven for the game. And it's 61-25. The 
Queen got up in the air and was fouled by Hurley. Hurley's first. Hurley has done a nice job in this ball game, limiting the penetration of Derek McQueen. McQueen beat him that time, drawing the foul. But it's been awfully hard for McQueen because when he has penetrated, the Duke defense has come to help. And Duke, they haven't been shy about helping because when they do, Wake's guys haven't been converting the open jumper. So you can afford to drop off and help. McQueen's first trip to the line, 72% free throw shooter. He hits it. That's what we were talking about earlier in the game. One of the big parts of McQueen's game is penetration. If you penetrate it and kick it back out to somebody, if they're going to convert the jumpers, then that makes you all the more dangerous. If they're not, then you just get guys playing right up on your really intense pressure. McQueen hits both free throws. 61-27. Duke trying to, or excuse me, Wake trying to put a little pressure against Duke. And there's that inside play. Abelnabi going to draw the foul against Ivy. Ivy's going to have four. So, senior Sam Ivey isn't helping Dave Odom's club too much in foul trouble. He might have to come out here as Medlin gets up off the bench. Ivey hit four points earlier. We thought he was really going to be the kind of factor he's been over the years, but now with four fouls, he has to sit down. Just over 17 minutes to go in this one. It's been all Duke. Kubek outside is three is short. The Queen will come out of there with it. Nice pass ahead. King on the fly. There's Kubek. He doesn't get to charge that time, but he's right there, stepping in in position to draw the five. There's just there's just a Duke guy every time Wake Forest trying to do anything with the basketball. Siler gives Henderson some trouble bringing it up. Hurley's had a pretty good floor game after a tough night on Wednesday. I was going to bring that up earlier when you were talking about him. He's had a nice job of rebounding in 48 hours mentally. Turnover, though, against the Blue Devils. King on the other end. Gets it to Carlisle. Back to King. King seems hesitant to shoot. I don't know why. Carlisle misses the three. Well, Carlisle had an open jumper there. It looks like we're going to get a foul. But Carlisle had an open jumper that he passed up. He faked, took it a little closer, threw it to King, who faked an open jumper, took it a little closer. Here's a guy that was the real spark for Duke in the first half, Thomas Hill. And Kubek will get a breather. Fouls on Chris King. That was his second. Wake Forest in the bonus here. As Duke has committed its 17th foul. Christian Leitner will be the man at the free throw line, where he's four for four today. And shooting close to 86% on the season. Really came on last year at tournament time. Young man who then was a freshman. Now is a sophomore and one of the key ingredients in a Duke team that's 12 and 3 coming into today's action. He had that big game in the NCAA tournament win over Georgetown. Not a bad day, huh? He's coming off 18 points and 13 rebounds on Wednesday night, so he's headed for another double double here. It's both free throws. Davis will check in and Leitner will get a chance to catch his breath on the Duke bench. 16-17 to go in the ball game, and it is 63-29. McQueen in low to Medlin. See Hurley drop way off McQueen, forces Medlin to pass it back out. Nice move by McQueen, but he skipped. And that'll be another wake turnover. Now what Medlin did right there, Brad, McQueen penetrates into the middle. Abdul Nabi comes to stop him. Medlin, instead of going toward the basket, steps outside. Medlin's just not a threat outside. This leaves McQueen really no place to throw the basketball. The young man walks. It hangs your point guard out to dry, doesn't it? People are wondering, how, how come McQueen's having a tough year? Well, you've got to help him. As you say, you can't hang him out to dry, and that's what happened on that particular occasion. You know, Medlin's not a shooter from the outside. He's got to get close. Thomas Hill. Henderson lobs in low off the lobby in close. Duke, you can see that they've really changed their offense around. 
from the first half when it was mainly a transition kind of game. They're bringing their perimeter guys all sort of out around the three-point line. They set it up in there after a few passes, having moved the defense where there's no help for the inside guys. 36-point Duke lead. You know, Wake Forest just is not this bad. Duke playing really well defensively, making them look that way, but Wake has some people who can play. So there's Henderson helping out against King. King misses that shot, but Henderson completely leaving his man on the outside because he's not worried at all about the perimeter shot. Duke will slow things down a little bit. Hurley will set it at the point. Now what Duke is going to do, they'll run sort of out of this double stack, move the defense around, and what they'll end up with is Abdelnabi all alone inside. There he is. And he got it. No help there. Every time Wake catches the ball inside, there's three Duke guys around him. But by just that little bit of movement on offense, Duke clears out the inside. 38-point Duke lead. Carlisle for three. Nothing will go right from the outside for Wake Forest. That's the way it's been all season. Duke with a chance to go up 40 points with still 14 minutes to play. Henderson's jumper. No good, and Siler gets the carry. He just has such a smooth release. You're really surprised when that ball didn't go in the basket. Queen. Nobody moves for him. Finally, Carlisle will. Carlisle finally gets a jump shot to drop for him. Looks like Carlisle has decided that if nobody else is going to do it, he's going to at least shoot the ball out of him. Somebody might as well. But your point is well made, Brad. McQueen once again gets stuck down inside. That's his job. He's supposed to penetrate it there. He drew the defense. Everybody just stood and watched him. Bobby Hurley. A rough outing on Wednesday against North Carolina. He's really come back and played well today. Missed in close, but Abdelnabi follows him. There's a difference right there. As Hurley penetrates down the lane, Duke guys go to the board. Medlin just threw it out of bounds. And another turnover. And that puts Dave Odom's Wake Forest Stephen Deacons over 20 on the turnover side. And they're trailing also 69 to 31. We'll be back after these messages from our good friends at Budweiser. 12 to play here at Joel Memorial Coliseum in Winston-Salem. Brad Nestler and Dan Bonner with you, and the Duke Blue Devils definitely in command. It doesn't get any easier for Wake Forest and the Demon Deacons. They've got to go on Monday and play at North Carolina. So for Dave Odom, it's a matter of keeping, trying to keep his kids' confidence up, and it's a place like that, it's going to be hard. Caffrey hits the jumper. 71-31. Duke 540. Foul as McQueen went up. Joe Cook in the ball game for the first time. Fouls McQueen. But Dave Odom talked before the game about how it was very important to be positive with his team. You can't get down on your basketball team. Obviously, they've run into a real meat grinder here today. We knew Duke was going to come back and be a buzzsaw after what happened on Wednesday night, but obviously Dave Odom knew that too, but he didn't think his team would commit as many turnovers and so forth. McQueen, three for three from the line, has seven points. Well, what you have to do now as a coach is during that timeout say, okay, let's forget about the score. Our game is going to be 13 minutes long. Let's see what we can do in our game here for 13 minutes. Try to get something positive to happen to build on, particularly going into Monday night's game against North Carolina. Davis pulls off the missed free throw. Joe Cook in there now. Running things at the point for Duke. Davis fouled from behind by Chris King. King's third foul. So Wake Forest has tons of foul trouble. Three players with three and Ivy with four. Chris King just has not been an offensive factor in the game. Neither has Anthony Tucker. And when those two guys don't have any kind of offensive output at all, it's going to be awfully hard for Wake Forest to compete with anybody. Now, the Deacons have had some excellent wins this year. They beat Alabama. Davis, first point of the game. Ryan Davis, a sophomore out of Capitol Heights, Maryland. One of the ACC players that toured Greece over the summer. Not bad duty. No, it sounds like pretty good duty. Second will also go. 
And with the exception of Joe Cook, everybody that's played for Duke has scored at least something for Duke. And this kid, Thomas Hill, has really had a game. Well, that's some real. He showed you some real quickness getting out there, just gliding out, knocking the ball out of bounds. Antonio Johnson in there. 73-32. Cook's going to get the foul. Now he's got his name in the book. Said he hadn't scored. Now he's got a personal foul. Well, you got to get your name in the book <laughs> one way or the other. However you can. So Wake Forest on their own baseline with 12.39 to go. Johnson's got to get it out to somebody. Finally got it to King. Duke is still playing hard on the defensive end. Siler's three-pointer is short. And That's the way it's gone for Wake Forest today. Johnson just can't pick up the ball. Hill does. Gets it to McCaffrey. Joe Cook. Leitner with a rebound. Double team. Nice move to get it out of there with the left hand. The kid's so fundamentally strong. Here's a little hook shot. You cannot let a guy like Leitner catch the ball down there, take a dribble, and go across the lane without anybody coming to help out. Biggest lead of the ball game continues to balloon up for Duke. Up by 43. Tomeo Johnson's three-pointer won't go. Leitner with a rebound. Now he's got a double-double. Duke's still doing the job on the boards. He drives on Siler, puts up a flying jump shot, and got it. You gotta be kidding. McCaffrey's got seven. The Queen out to Antonio Johnson, his three-pointer, no good, and Laker to the rebound. That's just what we're talking about, Brad. That's a nice play by McQueen. He creates the opening for Johnson. The only thing that happens is Johnson doesn't convert. Laker misses. Battle underneath and a whistle and a foul. Foul's going to be against that man right there, Derek McQueen, fouling Thomas Hill, who corralled the rebound. Mike Krzyzewski. That's four. Going to put some fresh bodies in the game. Four fouls on McQueen. Leitner goes out. See Todd Sanders coming in for Wake Forest. Buckley and Palmer in the ball game for Duke. That may be the last we'll see of the Duke starters. With 11-12 remaining. You just don't expect this kind of a laugher in a conference, particularly on the road. Hill with 11 points in the first half. Too hard. The left hand. Buckley keeps it alive. Boy, nice job by Buckley. You can't get the ball. You just knock it out. Tom Wise, number 30, also in the ball game for Wake Forest. Out to Hill and a whole new look lineup here. For the Duke Blue Devils with the big lead. Gee, Hill really got plastered. McQueen's going to get called for the foul. That's going to do it for McQueen, too. Talk about running through a screen. I don't think McQueen knew the screen was there. Got to talk to one, or other, one another on defense. Hill. He got it right in the chin. Maybe that's not five on McQueen. I've got him for five fouls. Well, that is five, Brad. There he goes. He leaves with seven points. And three rebounds, only one assist. But again, he didn't get a lot of help when he penetrated in there from his teammates. So that's why that assist number is pretty low. Well, of course, to get an assist, Brad, you have to score. And he did a nice job, as you say, drawing the defense, doing the kind of things a point guard is supposed to do. But when you pitch the ball back out and the fella shoots and doesn't convert, you can't get an assist on that. Well, you've heard Dan and I say they have only one true point guard. Now they're going to have some other people that will have to play that spot because McQueen is history. And Hill misses from the free throw line. Siler's jumper, no good, got his own rebound. Boy, he's down for the year. It's one of the few second chance opportunities that Wake Forest has had today. Siler was not blocked out, and you're right, he can get up in the air. Hook outside. McCaffrey guarded by Siler. Nice drive by McCaffrey, almost got it. Palmer couldn't get the follow, and King will clear it off. Ahead to Sanders. 
Sanders pulls up to 13. Wake Forest running well in the transition. 77-36. McCaffrey double team gets it to a wide open Joe Cook. He doesn't take it. Well, Duke has a lot of people at the guard spot who can really shoot the ball. Cook is not one of them. Seiler knocks it away from McCaffrey from behind, but Duke will still have it under their own basket. And we've got nine minutes and 47 seconds to go in this one in Winston-Salem. It is all Duke Blue Devils, 77-36. for Holly Farms Players of the Game Award brought to you by Holly Farms, America's number one brand of fresh chicken. When things are going right, Dan Bonner, they just continue to go right no matter what you do, right? And what's the old song say? When you're hot, you're hot. There he gets bounced. He's going out of bounds actually behind the board. <laughs> <laughs> that net just pops up there. Really? Didn't draw any iron at all. Bill McCaffrey probably couldn't make that one nine times out of ten playing horse with somebody, but he does it over two defenders because everything's gone right for Duke today. 77-36, Brad Nessler and Dan Bonner with you at Joel Memorial Coliseum in Winston-Salem where it has not been a good outing for the hometown Demon Deacon so far today. Number three is David Hedgeco in the ballgame playing point guard now for Wake Forest. He's on Cook at the top of the circle. McCaffrey's going to pump it over Siler. He's fouled. Siler's out there playing with a great deal of effort. He's trying to put some pressure against McCaffrey. That time he drew the foul. Five, five. McCaffrey from a, what a sports family. His brother Ed's a senior on the Stanford football team. His sister, Monica, plays hoops at Georgetown. Not too bad for one family, huh? And look at that percentage from the free throw line. Him. I talked him right into that, didn't I? <laughs> Way to go, Brad. McCaffrey, a 6'3 freshman from Allentown, Pennsylvania. I see what he's done now. He tucked his shirt in there in the front. That's, That's the whole thing. Oh, nope, oh. that wasn't it either. He's got to tuck it in all the way around, <laughs> not just in the front. <laughs> McCaffrey hasn't missed free throws in a long time, and we talked him into missing a pair there. Let's go. so far today. That's cool. A walk-on. You can always tell the walk-ons. They're the guys that don't have their names on the back of their jerseys. So Sanders way outside. Partially blocked, I thought. Let's see. We'll wait and get the call. It was blocked. Robert Palmer and Tom Wise locked up with one another, and then neither one could go to the ball. And it just went out of bounds. Not all the games in college basketball are as lopsided as ours. Arkansas and Texas A&M in a nine-point game, first half. LaSalle, boy, they got a player on that team that you can watch for the rest of this year and into the pros. And a three-point lead. Here it is, 77-36. Uh, Buckley. Davis. Buckley working hard inside. He and Tom Wise really banging one another in there. Cook, jumper off the glass, no good. And King trying to get to it, and he does. Comes down one on two, and pull up and take it. Too hard off the glass. That's great defense by McCaffrey. What you have to do in that situation is stop the guy, make him shoot the jump shot, rather than get the layup for the dunk, and McCaffrey ju did just that. And they're going to call a foul on Wise. You heard, you heard Dick Preparo say 30 or holding. That's not all he was doing. Here you have a transition situation. A smaller guy against a bigger guy. Make him pull up and shoot that jump shot. Barely draws iron. That's really good defense in the transition game. Duke has beaten Wake Forest twice by 40 points in the past. And with a 77-36 lead, it's a possibility that could occur again today. Crawford Palmer. Somebody can see the hit from the line right now. Lost the handle, almost lost the ball. Steal by Davis, he keeps it alive. Nice 
nice move, but he doesn't get the basket. Well, we were talking about defense in transition, and that time Tom Wise made the turnover, got back, made Davis change his shot, made him take that underneath kind of shot. And as a result, here you can see Davis. Now watch Tom Wise going to come into the picture right there, slaps at the ball, but he made Davis change the shot just enough so that Davis misses it. Palmer's going to get the foul coming over the back. But good hustle by Tom Wise. He could have stood up on the other end of the court and watched Davis dunk, but he didn't. He got down, hustled, caused the miss. King cross courts to Wise. Simon around a Wise pick will take the three-pointer. That's a big league screen right there by Tom Wise. Well, Siler hits the three. I believe that's the first three-pointer of the day for Wake Forest. That was a pass. <laughs> are the are terrible looking shot. Buckley needs some more touch on the ball. But no, he was trying to pass it inside the pole. Sanders drives. Double team on the baseline. A whistle and a foul. It'll be on Buckley. Clay Buckley picks up the foul. His father, Jay, played at Duke in the 60s, and uh, an uncle, uh, Bruce, who played for North Carolina in the 70s. Hitchko, we said a walk-on, came on from uh, intramurals at Wake Forest. When Steve Ray, the backup point guard, went down for the year with a knee injury, they needed somebody else, and they got Hitchko. Sanders misses a free throw. been nothing free about going to the line today for either one of these teams has it the exception of maybe that's been late free it just hasn't been productive that's right so Sanders gets another try 6'6 six, six, junior McQueen out falling out early in the game Sanders gets the second he has three points and it is 77 39 Duke with a big lead over Wake Forest we'll be back after this word from our friends at Budweiser Number eight, Duke, rolling big on Wake Forest with 7-16 to play. Other scores around the country. And he crumbs Cardinals in front of Memphis State by four. Tennessee, big on Kentucky, first half score. Siler with a steal. Siler playing hard out there. Rocking foul as he went up. Should have picked that one up. Brad, you talk about Robert Seiler playing hard. You can see he's going to be able to come up with the basketball here. That's a great play by Hedgeco. Reaches in and knocks it away, and then Seiler down the other end. Seiler is real good speed, jumps very well. Playing in transition is really more his style than the half-court offense, but a guy like that who hasn't been playing a lot, this is a chance for him. This is an opportunity to show the coach what he could do. We saw Thomas Hill do the same thing the other night for Mike Krzyzewski over in Chapel Hill in a situation that was bad for his team, comes in, impresses the coach with the kind of things that he can do, and that's what Siler has an opportunity to do right here. Siler in double figures with 10. No trouble with the pressure for Duke. The interesting thing for both of these teams right now is these are combinations of lineups that usually aren't playing together. Or playing at all. Ivy pulls it <laughs> off ahead to Siler. Well, that, that's true, too. I didn't mean to be brutally honest, but I was anyway. McCaffrey picks up the foul, and Siler will go back to the free throw line. Siler getting up and down the court. Sam Ivy with the rebound. Real good outlet pass. Wake Forest running well. Siler back to the stripe for two. See the left. Or you may have seen during the course of the game the uh, knee brace on the left knee. He just totally blew that thing out a couple of years ago. And it's a miracle almost that he's even playing for Wake Forest. There it is. Well, Wake, of course, had a season a couple of years ago where everybody was hurt. I always knew it was Wake Forest because there were six guys on crutches walking in the arena. <laughs> doesn't look good at the airport either, does it? A oh, nice job. Good hustle. Sanders way outside. Drills one. Sanders is another guy in that situation like Silo. This is an opportunity for him to show the coach what he can do. Brian Davis all alone. Davis first field goal. He's got four points. 79-45. 
stretched over six minutes to go. Siler works against McCaffrey, gets it to Sam Ivey, who's turned around jumper, won't go. Hedgeco tried to sneak one in there, no good. And finally, Wise will finish it off. The power move inside by Tom Wise. Big, strong kid. He's broken his nose about three or four times. Foul inside against Buckley, banging into Wise. Buckley picks up his second foul. Bill Medlin's going to check in. Wise will come out. Well, I think Wise is the free throw shooter. Seventy-nine forty-seven with five fifty-one to go here in Winston-Salem. Brad Nessler and Dan Bonner with you. This ACC matchup that has been controlled by Duke and Robert Bricky can laugh about this one. He's going to be out a couple more, a couple more weeks. He told us in the pregame. Christian Leitner's on now him a little bit. What is going on there? I think Bricky must be trying to grow a mustache, and Leitner's letting him have it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sam Ivey hits the free throw. <laughs> Certainly a little more pleasant on the Duke bench than it was on Wednesday night. This is the closest now that Wake Forest has been in the second half with a lot of the uh, substitutes in there, 79-48. 31-point difference. Cook looks into Palmer, drives instead. Nice job by Hedgeco to cut off the baseline. Boy, McCaffrey's one. You can tell he's a shooter because he catches the ball ready to pull the trigger every time. Looking at the hoop, yeah. Medlin's going to draw that foul. Oh, no, excuse me, Palmer. Palmer picks up his second. Let's see if I can guess the shooter wrong again this time. I think it's Medlin. Bill Medlin, sophomore out of Greenville, North Carolina. It really was a pretty big part of the Wake game inside last year, but comes in averaging just over a point a game. Put on about 40 pounds since he enrolled at Wake Forest. It's the free throw. Hadn't scored in his last seven games. If you just joined us, we were talking about it earlier, and has five points in this one. has 70 or rather 50 points they wish they had 70 points down by 29 closest they've been in a long time McCaffrey all the way he's fouled foul's going to be against Hedgeco McCaffrey really exploding on the dribble McCaffrey just turns it up right there you can see him switch gears take it to the basket Hedgeco fouls him and that's really a shooter. As you watch that replay, McCaffrey, once he started up for the basket, even though he was fouled, he never took his eyes off the basket. I bet he hits the free throws, too. We talked him out of two of them earlier. He's got eight points on the day. Bill McCaffrey hits both. 27 to go as Duke spreads it back out to a 31 point cushion. Buckley back in. Palmer sits down. Hedgeco all the way on the baseline, laid it up. And Buckley blocked it. There's probably not that, not that many guys that big playing in the intramural. I, I was gonna say, probably didn't get a lot of them rejected there. Cook. His running jumper won't go. He's the only guy for Duke who hasn't scored. Sanders, nice pass in low to Medlin. Medlin to Ivy. And Ivy's foul as he hits in close. We've been talking about people getting themselves in position to score. That pass goes into Medlin. Defense comes to get him right there. Ivy steps in. That's what you have to do. You've got to fill into a position where your teammate can get you the ball. Davis went to help. Ivy steps in, gets a layup. Sam Ivy came into this one 11th in Wake Forest history in scoring and 12th in rebounds. 
Looking for his eighth point, trying to complete the three-point play. Somebody was in the lane, but that sure looked like it. I guess not. Well, they're going to let that one ride. I think Sanders was about <laughs> two yards in the lane, but. It's one of those things, you see the guys stand there in the lane and all of a sudden they realize they're going in and say, wave the arms, trying to keep themselves out. To McCaffrey, his three-pointer. Medlin ran into it, no foul call. The ball goes away and Hedgeco's got his third rebound. Nice pass to Wise. I'd like to see Hedgeco score. Not that time. He's worked hard, but had that one blocked by Joe Cook. Cook doing a nice job recovering. Edgeco thought he had an open jumper, but Cook coming back to him very well. Siler on the inbound. Way up there, running jumpers good by Siler. Siler's been a positive factor for Wake Forest in the second half. Outside, Cook hits it. That's his first basket. He said he hadn't hit the scoreboard. Now he had. Under four minutes to go. Hedgeco double team. Got rid of it. Had it stolen by Davis. Davis ahead. McCaffrey on the run. Will lay it in. Nice job by McCaffrey. He looked Hedgeco away. Faked that pass. Just with his eyes, Hedgeco slowed up, and Caffrey went to the basket. Caffrey in double figures with 11. Medlin. Around one hand, and it goes. It's just amazing to me that he could go six basketball games without a scoring a point. Three minutes and 25 seconds to go in the game, and it is 85-57. Duke rolling big here against Wake Forest. Number eight, Duke rebounding from their Wednesday night loss to North Carolina, doing it in big fashion over Wake Forest. There's one little Dima Deacon cheerleader that's not going to give up, though, despite the fact your team's on the short end. Wake Forest has shot only 37% from the floor, and... Duke right about 52%, which is just a shade over their average. So they've come back and played a fine ball game after what happened in Chapel Hill the other night. Approaching, approaching the three-minute mark, Siler picks up the foul. Well, Siler is definitely out there in attack mode. He hasn't slowed down since he's come in the basketball game. Robert's second foul. Normally, you wouldn't want somebody playing defense like that, but Siler, of course, as you get a look at a very discouraged Wake Forest bench, is just trying for the steal now. You've got to take some chances. So Cook hits the free throw. Cook's got three. Duke, as a team, came in shooting 77% from the free throw line. And Cook's already doubled his per game average here today. Gives an opportunity for some of these kids to see more action and get that much better, especially in an ACC matchup. 30 point Duke lead. Siler, 15 footer on the fly. Siler's had a fine game. He's got 16. Siler's much more comfortable with that shot off the dribble, sort of flying through the air like that, than he is going straight up. Well, now, maybe he can hit those shots. I don't think he's a guy I'd want to play horse. No, I wouldn't either. Jeez, what a nice shot. He's got 13. Down to the two and a half minute mark. Duke in a 2-3 zone now. Flags off the iron, and Palmer will pull it down for Duke. Duke's still working hard on the offensive end. Davis fouled as he went up for the shot. I 
have this vision that Mike Krzyzewski made his troops run a little bit in the last day and a half since the loss to North Carolina, that maybe there was some sort of deal made that if they played much better today, it wouldn't be quite so rough at practice next time. Well, Mike has a little bit of intensity about him. I would not have wanted to go to Thursday practice after that Wednesday night game. This will be win number 215 for Coach K. Ryan Davis at the free throw line. And he hits. You know, what a great career he's had at Duke. Do you realize that this year he's going to become the all-time winningest coach at Duke? Eddie Cameron had 226 wins back from the late 20s to the early 40s. And uh, Mike Krzyzewski, number two on the list now. Davis hits both free throws. Davis was six this half. 91-59 And Krzyzewski's Duke teams have won with a style and a, a grace about them that you know, has been very attractive. There's a foul right there. You listen to people as they take over programs. One of the things that a lot of coaches said, Eddie Fogler, in taking over the Vanderbilt program, said that he was using Duke. And he wanted to model it after the Duke program. Dave Odom. All those years as an assistant to Terry Holland at Virginia, seven years at Charlottesville. He's a Goldsboro, North Carolina native, which is uh, the eastern part of the state. And of course, when Mike Krzyzewski took over the program at Duke, his first couple of years were very, very rugged. So he knows the seat that Dave Odom is sitting in right, right. now. It was his second year, I guess, when uh, for Krzyzewski when he had the tough record and then Came the people like Allery and Dawkins and uh, all the rest. Well, they had Allery and Dawkins and Jay Billis. But they didn't, uh, they were all freshmen. They all had to play and they just got thrown to the wolves. Then the next year, Tommy Amaker came around. And Danny Ferry and the rest, and all of a sudden they're 37 and 3. <laughs> <laughs> now, certainly a coach would like it to be all of a sudden, but that was a lot of work. Now Buckley gets it. Buckley with his first basket. Now, that, now, I guess I said before, but with Buckley scoring, that does mean everybody who's played for Duke has scored. Palmer hasn't, but he made the full work done. He's in there right now. Okay. Buckley knocks it away. Nice hustle. Wake Forest will have it in front of their own bench. Under a minute and a half to go in this one. 93-61 Duke lead. And ironically enough, both these teams are about on their average points per game one. Siler outside. He's been the offense. 18 points for Siler. And that is his ACC best. He had 17 against Georgia Tech, so he's got his best outing of any ACC games this year with 18 points. Palmer might score now. There it is. Now everybody's happy. Okay, I've only been wrong twice. 95-63. Smart Forrester in the game. Over to Sanders, his jumper in and out. Tip won't go. Got it back again. This time it drops through. Sanders with seven points this half. And we're down to 33 seconds. Duke came in averaging 93 again. They've got 95 now. Wake Forest came in averaging 68, and they are at 65. So maybe this one's followed suit more than we thought it would. McCaffrey just keeps pumping it. He has 15. A few Duke fans that are here would like to see 100, of course, and Wake Forest would like to prevent that. Nice pass in. Wise goes up and scores. Catch by Wallace. Well, if they throw a three-pointer up and it goes, we'll have 100 points. But Siler instead is going to steal it and stuff it at the buzzer. Robert Siler with the final bucket of the game as Dave Odom and Mike Krzyzewski shake hands. It was all Duke today as the Blue Devils win it going away, 97-69. to So Duke now 13-3 and and 4-1 and in the ACC. The Demon Deacons winless in five ACC outings. First Union National Bank, Food Lion, and by Ford.
final score, Duke in an easy one over Wake Forest, 97 to 69. The final is the Blue Devils have five players in double figures and forced a lot of first half turnovers against the Demon Deacons who got down and could never fight their way back into it. We'll come back and talk more about this matchup in a moment after these messages. players of the game for Duke number 25 Thomas Hill a lot of players had big games for Duke Leitner Henderson with 18 points apiece but Hill came in in the first half when Duke was struggling a little bit it's hard to believe Luke Duke struggled in this game but Hill coming in in the first half really sparked him with 11 points for Wake Forest